Welcome to the Neural Implant Podcast, where we talk with the people behind the current events and breakthroughs in brain implants in an understandable way, helping bring together various fields involved in neuroprosthetics. Here is your host, Ladin Yurichek. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Neural Implant Podcast. Today, we are talking about uh, an article that came out a few weeks ago, uh, talking about the Neuralink animals uh, and how there are claims that researchers abused monkeys. So this is something that came out with the Physicians Com- Committee for Responsible Medicine, and uh, they allege that most of the animals have died, most of the primates in the studies have died, and they allege that the brain chip tests, their neural implants, have killed 15 out of 23 monkeys. So this is something that's really interesting. It's definitely caused, caused quite a stir in the neurotech community and kind of something that's not very typical for an Elon Musk company. The company, Neuralink, actually posted a rebuttal on their blog, and uh, that was very interesting. And I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit in a bit. But at the end of this, I'm, I'm going to, first of all, give you my thoughts about this and uh, what I've seen on Twitter and everything like this. And then I'm actually going to play a video from or an audio from the Tesla space, which is a channel devoted to Teslas mostly, but they also talked about this as well. And I thought they did a really good job. I asked for their permission to to post this and they they agreed. And uh, we're going to be we're going to be talking about that a little bit. So basically, in the original article, they claim that the animals have been abused, and that there are disturbing documents filed, and that many of the macaque monkeys in the experiments have suffered Uh, facial trauma, seizures following brain implants, and recurring infections at implant sites. Uh, They had a lot of deteriorating health, so they had to euthanize a lot of the animals. And so it's very clearly a a hit piece against Neuralink, and I want to be as objective as possible with this. And then in the rebuttal, Neuralink posted on their uh, blog that they they explained why this may have happened. So there were a few incidents of something didn't go well in the surgery, and uh, they had to euthanize the, the animal. But basically, they talked about they try as hard as they can to give the animals a very good life and they even show kind of their they even show pictures of their care facility which you know seems really good but nice <laughs> kind of a, a a heaven for kindergartners or something like this i don't know if it necessarily translates to animals this indoor space with a bunch of colorful plastic toys and a little wagon wheel and all this kind of stuff but anyways they definitely say that they go above and beyond what is required of them in these kind of studies and from my perspective too unfortunately that is a reality in studies is that as we're trying to develop these technologies, we don't want to test immediately on humans. We want to first test on animals. So usually you start with, uh, you know, lesser animals, a little bit more like rats before moving on to, you know, pigs and monkeys and stuff like this, things that are more similar to humans. And all these things are overseen by ethics committees. So you can't, at least in America, you can't just go and do, you know, whatever experiments you, you want. You have even ethicists and people who are in the field allow you to do whatever you want to do. So there is oversight in this. And a lot of times with the euthanasia, something just goes wrong in in the surgeries. And I've seen this as well. In the labs that I've seen, it is, for a lot of people, it is a difficult thing to look at. Actually, for me as well, it was very difficult to watch surgeries or euthanizing or doing implants, whatever. It took a really long time, actually. It took many weeks, many repeated exposures to be able to get used to something like this. You do get used to it. And a lot of times you think, okay, the conditions could be better. You could have a little bit more freedom for the animals. But at the same time, you can't necessarily because you have to have uh, certain studies and you have to be able to get the data that you need out of it. So it's like you're walking a fine line. But again, like these things are overseen and some people might argue that it's too much and and that it raises the cost of these kind of experiments. I think it can be $100 or $1,000 per animal. And we're talking rats, things that you would see in your kitchen and want to kill it right away. And these animals have... uh, a huge value actually because of all the care and food and facilities that that kind of go around that and of course a thousand dollars that that includes all sorts of things surgeries blah 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 all this all these things that that go into it so yeah it is a a dicey topic and to the extent that they could i think uh, the blog did a very good job rebutting uh, a lot of what the original article had talked about and i'm going to be posting both of these in the link i I had wanted to talk to somebody about this an expert in especially non-human primates and to see if something like this is normal but unfortunately nobody wanted to talk to me about this and i think it's kind of a radioactive topic so i'm not exactly surprised but yeah i think uh, i think it's really good okay it's um, i guess my conclusion is the moral gray zone but maybe in a hundred years we're going to be looking at what kind of barbarians we we were but uh, honestly at this point 
we can do all that we can to you know simulate this kind of stuff and actually a lot of my work in my phd i'm trying to simulate what these electrodes and and neural implants look like in the body without having to implant it into a body to save these kinds of lives and actually honestly to speed up the rate at which we can develop these. But at the same time, they are simulations. They are models. They are approximations. And as they say, all models are wrong and some models are useful. So at the end of the day, you do have to put it into a biological system and you want to put it into as close a possible biological system as human before going on to humans. Because if you have facial paralysis and uh, this kind of stuff in humans, when you implant them, then that that's not uh, as good, especially if it could have been easily prevented. So anyways, here is the episode from the Tesla time. And in the show notes, you have the link to the video. And so you can check it out there as well. But I thought this was really good. So enjoy. All right, let's talk about animal testing at Neuralink. Controversial subject, I know, but we've always been committed to discussing the latest updates and news about this company in the past. And we know that you all want to know the latest info about Neuralink. So it would be a bit of a failure if we didn't talk about the monkeys. There are reports abound right now about monkey deaths at Neuralink. Some of them involving some very unpleasant accusations about mistreatment. But we now have both sides of the story from the animal rights folks and Neuralink themselves. So there's a great opportunity here to break this down objectively identify some truths, and we're actually going to learn a lot about Neuralink in the process. Before we get started, let's just throw out a T-word warning for anyone who is sensitive to this subject matter, because animals definitely were harmed in the process, and we are going to discuss that. So, let's get going. Okay, so we'll start off with the heart of the matter. In early February, a complaint was filed to the U.S. Department of Agriculture alleging cruel treatment of macaque monkeys which were being used to test the Neuralink technology at the University of California's Davis Primate Center. These allegations would have taken place in the time between 2017 and 2020 when Neuralink were working with the university to manage their animal subjects. In 2020, Neuralink opened their own in-house animal facility, which was not mentioned in the complaint. So more on that later. Let's take a look at the folks making the claim, known as the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. They are a non-profit organization dating back to 1988, who seem to be primarily focused on promoting the vegan diet. Their messaging is mostly that eating meat is bad for your health. In 2021, they threw a beans not beef protest in Washington, D.C. It could be said that they are an animal rights group, but they are primarily about food and diet. The group was founded by Neil Barnard, who does seem to be a real doctor and professor of medicine at George Washington University, and a person who very proudly eats a lot of beans. If we go to their website, the first thing we see is a graphic that says, Tell Elon Musk to stop his cruel brain experiments with a button asking you to take action, aka give them money. So these folks clearly understand how the media works. If you go around saying that animals are dying in medical testing, no one bats an eye. Tell the media that Elon Musk is torturing and killing monkeys with brain implants and people will lose their minds. They got that right. The crux of their argument revolves around what the committee calls extreme suffering as a result of inadequate animal care and the highly invasive experimental head implants during the experiments. The PCRM says it obtained more than 700 pages of documents, including veterinary records and necropsy reports through a public records request to the university. The records relate to 23 monkeys owned by Neuralink, which were housed and experimented upon at UC Davis's facility from 2017 to 2020. It's no secret that animals are used in all kinds of product testing, from shampoo to medical devices. And we know that Neuralink have been experimenting on monkeys because they showed us one last year who had two brain implant devices and was using them to play a video game with his mind. So it shouldn't come as a major shock to anyone who is decently well informed that not all of the monkey tests turned out great for the subjects. Just for context, I tried to figure out how many animals die in medical testing in any given year. It's basically impossible to quickly find any article that isn't fake news propaganda for the animal rights people. 
But if we take PETA's own number of 100 million dead animals per year, then over that three-year period, there were 300 million casualties due to experiments, with Neuralink accounting for 23. So the only reason that they can make this such a big deal is because Elon Musk's name is attached to it. What makes this story really interesting is actually the response from Neuralink to the allegations. This is again an Elon Musk company. And we know that historically, Elon's companies do not do advertising, media relations, or public relations. Tesla being the strongest example of this. They never comment publicly on anything. They have no PR department at a trillion dollar company, and they don't say nothing to no one. They just let Elon do the talking, and I guess it's been working out pretty well so far. But Neuralink is a little bit different. Maybe it's because Elon is a little more hands-off with this company, he is an engineer and a self-taught rocket scientist, but I've never heard him claim to be a brain surgeon or any kind of medical expert or an expert in the field of wearable tech and smart devices, which is what Neuralink does. Elon wants a device that will allow him to merge human brains with artificial intelligence and hopefully solve a bunch of medical problems along the way. That's why he founded this company. But I wouldn't say he runs Neuralink in the same way that he does with Tesla and SpaceX. Anyway, that's why I found it so fascinating when Neuralink broke with tradition and released an official company response that meets these allegations head on. In a blog post titled Neuralink's Commitment to Animal Welfare, they write in depth about the company's past, present, and future approach to animal welfare. And there is a lot to learn from this blog. They begin by stating the facts. Currently, all novel medical devices and treatments must be tested in animals before they can be ethically trialed in humans. Neuralink is not unique in this regard. Then we get a bit of backstory on the relationship between Neuralink and the University of California. In the early days, the company did not have anywhere near the resources to care for their own animals. So they partnered with the university's California National Primate Research Center to establish the foundations of Neuralink's research and development mission. The first phase of that mission is described as novel surgeries in animal cadavers and then later in terminal procedures. So the first thing they did was to test on deceased animals who had been humanely euthanized as a veterinary decision. The next phase was terminal procedures, which involved performing the surgery in an anesthetized animal who is then euthanized at the completion of the surgery. These would be animals who were suffering from pre-existing conditions prior to the surgery and may not have proper quality of life. The reason that they take both of these steps is to ensure that an animal does not potentially suffer post-operation in the event that the test procedure has an unexpected result. As for the subject of monkeys missing fingers, the complaint outlines monkeys missing digits that they attribute to self-mutilation. Neuralink responds to that, saying, Missing digits are often a result of Roos macaques resolving conflict through aggressive interactions with one another, and they link to a peer-reviewed research paper that explains the subject. Neuralink also stresses that none of these injuries occurred at the UC Davis facility and the animals were injured prior to their arrival. Now, following those initial tests, Neuralink was able to move on to what they call survival surgeries that allowed them to test the function of different generations of implanted devices as they refined them towards human use. They acknowledge that over the course of those survival surgeries, a number of monkeys did end up having to be euthanized following the operation. They write, As part of this work, two animals were euthanized at planned end dates to gather important histological data, and six animals were euthanized at the medical advice of the veterinary staff at UC Davis. These reasons included one surgical complication involving the use of the FDA-approved product BioGlue, one device failure, and four suspected device-associated infections, a risk inherent with any percutaneous medical device. In response, we developed new surgical protocols and a fully implanted device design for future surgeries, end quote. So they are not outwardly denying many of these accusations. They are instead meeting them head on with the facts of the matter. One quick note here to say that BioGlue is an approved product for use as a surgical adhesive. 
However, it does say clearly in the FDA approval document, not for cerebrovascular repair. So if they did use this product in the context of brain surgery, then that was an error. So did a bunch of monkeys die in early Neuralink testing procedures? Yes, unfortunately they did. No one is denying that. But have things changed since then? Also yes. So like we said before, in the year 2020, Neuralink completed their very own in-house animal facility. This is what they wanted all along, but had to wait for a few successful funding rounds to build up the resources to do it. At that point, they moved their remaining monkeys from UC Davis to Neuralink. This also included the now famous Mind Pong monkey Pager. He was from that original monkey group, and as we've all seen on the video, he seems to be doing pretty well. Neuralink states, while the facilities and care at UC Davis did and continue to meet federally mandated standards, we absolutely wanted to improve upon those standards as we transitioned animals to our in-house facilities. The new facility is something they call a vivarium, which is basically just another way to describe an enclosed artificial animal habitat such as an aquarium or terrarium. The Neuralink Vivarium is 6,000 square feet of housing for both the pigs and macaque monkeys who serve as Neuralink test subjects. The company says the Vivarium is staffed with caretakers who are passionate about animal well-being, which is a central tenet of Neuralink's philosophy. And here is another quote from the blog post that really drives home how much they care about the animals and want to make that an important consideration for all staff. Quote, we further developed company norms around strong animal welfare advocacy by ensuring all employees have the opportunity to meet our animals and spend time with them alongside a trained animal care specialist. This investment in positive human-animal interactions encourages people to take that extra step to ensure their devices are designed to prioritize animal safety." End quote. In addition, they talk about constant veterinarian care and positive reinforcement training, a diet rich in fresh fruit and vegetables, and zero forced motivation. They specifically state, if an animal chooses not to participate in a training task, they are never forced to do. And lastly, they make a point of saying that Neuralink does retire healthy animals to sanctuaries and farms after their trial periods come to an end. Gertie the pig from the 2020 Neuralink product demo now lives on a farm where she plays in the grass and is far away from Elon Musk and his brain implants. Moving into the future, Neuralink presents this idea that the implanted monkeys are able to participate in product testing as they choose and are never forced into testing sessions. Basically, if the monkey wants to play Pong with his mind, and who wouldn't, he's free to do that as much or as little as he wants, just like a person. Neuralink closed out their statement by writing, We also look forward to a day where animals are no longer necessary for medical research. Yet, our society currently relies on medical breakthroughs to cure diseases, prevent the spread of viruses, and create technology that can change how people are able to interact with the world. However, if animals must be used in the research in the meantime, their lives and experiences should be as vital and naturalistic as possible. Now, unfortunately, 99% of people just read the headline about Elon Musk killing monkeys and made up their own minds about the situation. If you've come this far in the video, then that means you are in the small group of well-informed folks who now know both sides of the issue. We'll leave you to make your own decision on what's right and what's wrong. But I will say, the fact that the accusers felt the need to throw so much inflammatory language and hyperbole into their statement does imply that they might not be truthful, or at least it makes them appear less truthful, while Neuralink really hit it out of the park with their thoughtful and thorough response. Typically, when a company has something to hide, they release a very abrupt defensive statement that actually feels like it was written by a lawyer. But instead, the company took the time to educate us on their entire history and philosophy behind animal testing in a very personable way. If Tesla can find someone to do PR like this for them, then I wouldn't be opposed to Tesla bringing back PR, because this style works. Anyways, I'm scared to death to see what happens in the comments section on this one. Hopefully PETA doesn't show up and throw red paint on my Tesla, but please leave your thoughts on the matter down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it, and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.
Hope you enjoyed the show and were able to learn something new, bringing together different fields in novel ways. Until next time on the Neural Implant Podcast.